good day and welcome to the sixth edition of the Sassy Debate Challenge. We are here at episode 10, the semi-finals. This battleground of intellect is brought to you by Say What with support from the Swedish Embassy in Zimbabwe. I am your debate mistress, Nicole Natsaj Manikide, but powerfully known as Dr. Co. Dot Nicole. I will ask the contestants to introduce themselves from their far right to the far left, and then the games will begin. Hi, I'm Tari, Great Zimbabwe University. And I'm Vian, I'm also from Great Zimbabwe University. Hello, I'm Robert from Africa University. Makanaka from Africa University. Nicole. Third podium. Nicole Mashore, University of Zimbabwe. Um, Kosleth Nkala, University of Zimbabwe. Mary Ann Nazombe, National University of Science and Technology. Timisani Mloy from the National University of Science and Technology. Introductions having been made, let the games begin. And the motion reads, this house supports the decision to raise the age of sexual consent. I will repeat, this house supports the decision to raise the age of sexual consent. Contestants, your time starts now. I will ask Podium One opening government to make their way. Prime Minister, the floor is yours. Panel, in light of the motion in today's debate, we think it's important for us to look first of all at what the decision is, and that decision is to raise the age of sexual consent from 16 to 18, right? And we're going to tell you why exactly the legislature did make this move and why exactly it is the best interest of society, and we're going to fully explain to you what the role of the legislature is in society and how exactly this is best compared to other jurisdictions where the age of consent is actually lower than 16, right? And what are the negative implications and the precedent that we learn from those particular nations, right? So first of all, I'm going to tell you about the fact that in this debate as OG, we're not saying that being 18 or being 21 shows direct maturity, right? But we're saying that there's a social standard or, or expectation that by the time you're 18, you have been able to become a, a, an independent person and you're able to make more informed decisions and you have the capacity to do things, to do a lot more things, like enter into contracts, get into marriage, right? Go into clubs, drink, because you're now able to be held responsible and accountable for your own decisions and you're not dependent on a parent, right? And you don't hold anyone else accountable and therefore you suffer the full repercussions and you also know that what you're doing is wrong, right? So, what what exactly are we saying is OG first of all in this debate? We tell you that the legal system, right, or the legislature seeks to do seeks to make laws that harmonize society and effect peace within society, right? And make uniform application of law possible. That is to say, in a society where the large majority of other sectors in law, right, depend on you being 18 for you to contract or to get into marriage or for you to go into a club or for you to buy alcohol, right? Why exactly is it so important that a sex alone is being made to be considered at the age of a of skisting, right? Why exactly are we saying skisting is right for sexual consent? We think that that is wrong because at the end of the day we think that the other developments in the legal system show that emotion, emotional and psychological and mental maturity are demonstrated by the fact that you are socially expected to be able to get into contract and make informed decisions when you are now 18 and you are no longer a dependent person right as defined by the constitution but we're also going to tell you about the fact that at the age of 16 or lower right you are still in that experimental stage and you are not fully aware of what you are doing and the law recognizes that right but then it seeks to, eff to effect laws that are going to protect the youth right we're not saying that the law is going to apply the law regardless of the context that's around each particular case, right? But we see that there are cases of the Romeo and Juliet cases where they also recognize what exactly is a stake in a situation, right? To up to effect the right mitigating factors so that they don't just say, oh, fine, you violated the law. This person is 18 and you are, this person is 16 and you are 25, therefore you are going to prison. They look at the particular age difference that exists in the particular, uh, within a particular case. They look to effect mitigating factors, right? Which is why you cannot say you are going to arrest people that are both 16 year olds or 18, 17 year olds for having sex, right? But we think that it's an instance where you're now making it possible for people to have sex once they are now 18 years old or above. We think that they are mentally capable of knowing what exactly it is they are doing and therefore the law seeks to recognize that mental capacity, right? But then we also talk about the fact, we also look at the precedent that exists from other um, jurisdictions and other nations, right? For example, Japan recently increased the age of consent from 13 to, six to 16, right? In order to combat sexual predators that um, t that um, prey on the young, right? And the um, easily influenceable minds of these young children and the young girls, right? We think when you look at the Western um, 
countries that have ages that are actually low ages of consent that are still at the ages of 12 or 13 or 14, right? We take precedent from those particular nations and learn that there is high levels of like child trafficking, sexual exploitation of these young girls, right? There are so many cases that are rampant in those particular societies, right? And it's a demonstration of how these people can get away with the sexual exploitation of minors in the societies because they are not held accountable as the age of consent is so low that you're actually able to like um, irrefutably have sex without uh, without the like legal consent of that particular person, right? But you claim to have that person has consent simply because the legal system says so. The legal system seeks to get harmony in society and seeks to protect these particular individuals. We're not saying that um young people right are going to like stop having sex or they are no going to know this particular law. We know we know that people are still going to do this thing, right? But we're saying it's the legal system. We're not going to condone something simply because it's something that happens on a daily basis. We might as well be condoning each and every single illegal that exists in society, right? We seek to control the society and to seek to harmonize society. And this is why we think as OG will save to in this debate. We have never been more proud of our cause. Thank you. That was the Prime Minister practically somersaulting into the nitty gritties of this argument. I will now be moving swiftly on to call the Leader of Opposition to make their case. Leader of Opposition. Now, Pano, our delegation is a delegation that is running on the theme of the liberal way of understanding sexuality. We are hammering on the issues of choice and responsibility amongst youth and young people. Now, my noble delegation, do allow me to address a case. What we are talking about today is the fact that sexual development starts at a young age, at infancy, when someone is born, from the phallic stage until they are ready to drive it down to their pubes. At the end, puberty starts at 12. Around 16, everyone is free and ready to have sex. Because at the end of the day, this person has been developing for 16 years sexually. So my noble delegation, we cannot say that this person should not be in a situation to have sex and simply criminalize them because we want them to behave in a certain way. There are, situation, there are simple ways to rebut these situations. For example, training. Through guidance and counseling, these people can be trained to have safer sexual choices. Now what we are saying as a delegation is 16 is mature enough because someone has been developing for 16 years from infancy. We also are saying that a person becomes physically prepared for sex at 14 years old. So it will give them more years between 14 and 16 to develop before we give them that right. And we also are talking about the harmful power of the Constitution today. Because if you want to, to, to control people too much to the Constitution, even though what they're doing is not harmful to anyone, at the end of the day, that is just tyranny. There's an example of this we see through the Holocaust. Hitler himself, my noble delegation, used the, the Constitution to oppress Jews because the Constitution defined Jews not as people. So at the end of the day, if we dig if you criminalize these people simply because they want to act on their sexual edges, this means that we're creating a society that understands sexual relationships as something that is criminalizable, demonizable, and just totally bad. And this is not safe. This is negative to sexual health. Now, at the end of the day, we understand that sex is a, is a right and that is a need. So if sense, sex is a right and is a need, and it's in, the, in this effect, at the end of the day, we're saying that we have no right to take away someone's need and repress their needs, hence leading to other damages on their, on their psyche, such as sexual frustration. And we are also want, we also want to, to we are also saying that 16 is fine because when someone is developing and we allow them to have sex at 16, they become self-aware. They understand them, they explore their sexuality, they know what they prefer, and then they become ready for marriage. At the end of the day, many marriages are suffering because people get into marriage without knowing what they really want. People get into marriage without becoming sexually developed, and at the end of the day, they underperform. Houses themselves break down because of this issue. So if we allow people to start engaging in sex if they choose to at 16, we are doing the world, we are doing the world, whole world in the society a favor. We also are saying that we, once we decriminalize this issue, people understand sex in a, in a different light. We are not saying we want to force people or tell people that they should engage in sex. However, we want to give them the right. At the end of the day, what we are arguing for is the right to the choice and responsibility of individuals. And we also are talking about the fact of discourse. Once we decriminalize this matter, it's something that we can discuss, and then sexual reproductive personnel that understand these things better can let us engage with the youth and teach them on the positive things that they can engage in each and every day so that they can be safe from the problems that come from not knowing enough. We also are talking about we also are talk, we are hammering on informed decisions. This is what we want to. That is what this is what we want to focus on. We are saying once people have their right, once people have their self determination, 
we really want to focus on, 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 on making them empowered, where they have informed decisions, where they know what is going on, and at the end of the day, their rights and their livelihoods and social functioning is enhanced, because sex is part of social development. Sex is a need, and we cannot take away that right from people that want to explore their bodies. Thank you. Sex is a right, sex is a need. At this point, we will be taking a short break. Stay tuned and we'll be back with more. Welcome back to the sixth edition of the Sassy Debate Challenge. I am your debate mistress, dot co, dot Nicole. We are here at the semi-finals talking about raising the uh, right, raising the sexual consent age. Uh, we have heard from the Prime Minister as well as the Leader of Opposition. And I will now call upon the Deputy Prime Minister to come and make their case. So opening opposition runs a case that we should, the, the age of sexual consent should remain where it is because sex is a right and those people have been maturing ever since birth and whatnot. But in this debate, we would like to address fundamental principles that could actually take this debate somewhere. First of all, we want to clarify that a child is anyone who is below the age of 18. And then we clarify that who decides the age of sexual consent, the legislature and the court. And why do they do, they do this in respect of children? Because they have a parental role to play with respect of the best interest of the child. In other words, we are saying we are not here to debate whether or not at the age of 16 your body is ready to have sex or it's not but we're here to debate if at the age of this of, of 16 you are ready to make informed decisions um, about uh, your sexual intercourse which are actually to, to the best of your interest we think that this uh, whole fallacy about sex being a right can be crushed because sex is not a fundamental right and in instances where lawmakers can limit it um, to promote public policy protection etc things like that well surprise they can Moving on, from a legal perspective, the society is supposed to be harmonized. And an age of sexual consent that is 16 is there because uh, it suggests that si at 16, individuals are ready to have sexual intercourse. We think that at 16, it is normal to be experimental sexually. Uh, and we do not want to, you to look at this in an Adolf Hitler lens where we are arbitrarily arresting people because they're having sex. No. But just because something is biologically expected, you're expected to be sexually active at 16, uh, it doesn't uh, therefore warranting it to be normal it doesn't mean it should be condoned we want to condone things that are right we seek to unify these things in all the other facets of the law you can consent to contracts when you're not 18 what is it that is so important about sex that you want the age of consent to remain at 16 moving on we think that biological maturity is not a diverse or a proportional inverse of psychological or emotional maturity. Yes, we understand that at 16, uh, you are allowing your sex drive to get in your head, yes, but we do not believe that you are ready to make informed decisions about this. We think that these issues should not be mixed or conflated in this debate. However, we are also not suggesting that uh, the age 18 is a threshold of maturity or something. But the reason we think 18 is the best age is because at this stage we think it is best to respect the role of whoever made the law uh, which wants to raise the age of consent because at the end of the day these laws do not seek to be overly ambitious thereby stepping to your rights to bodily autonomy but they are in the best interest of you as, a, as an individual. Not only are they protecting you from the other external factors and humans but they are also protecting you from yourself. Just because one is at the age of consent it does not mean that when they are now engaging in sexual intercourse is consensual. Because when we're talking about something consensual, we mean um, the, 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 
the surrounding circumstances are right leading to to the consent of the sex we think that other nations have set precedents the countries with the lowest um, age of sexual consent have the worst cases of pedophilia have the worst cases of sexual uh, sexual exploitation and we think that if we raise this to 18 we are addressing some certain social imbalances that exist within our society and we and this is the reason why we are proud to propose. Thank you. That was the Deputy Prime Minister. There will always be two sides of a coin and therefore I will ask the opening opposition, Deputy Leader of Opposition to take the floor and make their case. So the major argument that side government is bringing to us today is this issue of informed consent. And as side opposition, what we're saying is that that's exactly the point. The issue is that people are not making informed, decision about, informed decisions about sex. Therefore, by raising the age of sexual consent, we are saying that we can have these honest and open conversations with people who are still in adolescence so that, by the, so that if and when they sh do decide to have sexual encounters, they're able to do so in an environment where they're informed and in an environment where they're learned. Listen, children and teenagers are not, a, a, are not stupid. They are capable, if you sit a person down and you talk to them and you have an open and honest conversation with them about what about certain behaviors, we see that they can actually have positive impacts. And not only that, but we're also seeing even from a physio, even from a, from a neurological perspective where people People are actually able to make informed and consensual decisions even as young as 10 years old because they now understand some because now they because they are able to understand some of the impulses and all of these are the natural urges that they go through. Now we are side opposition, we are coming and we're saying that what we want is for people to make responsible choices. We are advocating for an issue, we are advocating for a side of self-determination. We are saying that chill people who want to people, especially teenagers at the age of 16, who want to engage in sexual activity we must not take away that autonomy because what that ends up happening is we end up with societies that are repressed and suppressed where they do not want to have these conversations about sex that's the major issue that we have with side with side government where they are advocating for a system that is that is that is repressive where we are saying that these children where we are saying that these children or these adolescents um should, should not be having sex because they don't know about it. And what we're saying is that's exactly what we want. We want to teach them about what, we want to teach them about sexual reproductive health. We want to teach them about these things so that they're able to make them. And also we come up to you and we, to, we come up to you and we talk about keeping about um, under the same point of Sorry, let me start again. Um, we come to you and we talk about, under the point of preventing exploitation, we are saying that exploitation actually happens outside of the confines of the law. So if people are well informed and if laws agree for people to be able to engage in sexual activity, we see that rates of exploitation actually are lower. And they come up to us and they talk about how there are some societies that actually have lower ages of consent. But we also see that these same societies have got lower STD rates, they've got lower rates of teenage pregnancies, and they do not in any case have have high cases of sexual activity among youths because listen people are going to do what they are going to do the most that we can do for them the most that we can do for them is to allow them these safe spaces where they're able to engage where they're able to engage within these activities in a place where they are protected by the law and these are natural impulses and there is wanting to have sex is as natural as feeling hungry or feeling thirsty these are not things that we should demonize these are things that we should be open about and that's what we're saying that's what we want the law to support we want the law to support this idea that these things are not things that happen in some supernatural way that sex is not is something that should be that we that is dirty that we should not talk about because everyone in the world is in a sense a product of sexual activity so by hiding that or by saying that we should not talk about and that it's wrong it's and 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 that it should not and that it should not be and that the age of consent should be raised um, we are we are saying that it's in a way it leads to repression it's a dictator it's dictatorial and we are and we are not considering all of these biological considerations. So what are we saying? We are supporting safe and responsible choices. We are not saying have sex. We are saying if you should, you must do it in a manner that is legal. Thank you.
that was the deputy leader of opposition at this diplomatically heated point in the argument we will be taking a short break stay tuned and we'll be back with more Welcome back to the sixth edition of the Sassi Debate Challenge. Yes, that is the Speak and Solve initiative brought to you by Say What with support from the Swedish Embassy in Zimbabwe. We are at the half mark of our debate and the topic reads, this house supports the decision to raise the age of sexual consent. We've heard from the opening government as well as the opening opposition. And now we shall hear from the closing government. Member of government, the floor is yours. Panel, this debate is about interrogating the point at which we protect individuals. Is it when we shield them from the actual reality or is it when we actually expose them to the actual dangers that might come? Opening opposition is out of this debate for a number of reasons. One, when they claim that we think sexual maturity starts at a young age so people should start having sex just because they feel like it. We think they ignore the number of circumstances that actually exist in order to enforce to determine whether or not individuals can effectively engage in sex. We think there's so much more responsibility to sex than just things such as like uh, in, it's, it's, it's than just feelings and the feeling of pleasure that we think when individuals engage in sex they risk so many things they risk their mental health and they have to do abortion because they are 16 and they cannot drop out of school we think they risk things such as unwanted pregnancies being dropped out of home because there's so much responsibility and burden that comes down with sex we don't just want to buy into the idea that sex should exist just because we feel like it but two and they say we think like our sex like our prepares these individuals for marriage and like it's important and we think the insinuation is that we ought to prepare individuals for narratives that marriage is only valuable when you are good at sex or when you know your game is good. But secondly, we think they also strike themselves on the toe when they say like individuals should value more sex, you harm the very same institution of marriage when you want sex to be at the center of that very same institution. We think like opposition does not do much in this debate and they get more engaged at the time. What do we rank above OG which we think like was relevant in the opening half? A number of things. Firstly, they say that oh no, we think we harmonize society and we promote like uniform laws. Right? We think what kind of impact then does this have when it comes to things like criminal justice system and accountability existing when you cannot draw a clear distinction between who is an adult and who is a child because an 18 year old can vote but a 16 year old can take a responsibility as which is having sex we think we exist in the gray areas when it comes to law as who is a child and how do you prosecute these individuals in terms of like enacting laws that impact that exists means individuals are far like likely less like likely to be like accountable for a number of actions because of that like ability to, inability to have a clear distinction but two when they say we like combat things such as like uh, sexual predictors that are exploitative, right? Brilliant point. But then what does it look like on ground in countries like Zimbabwe? We think in the vast majority of instances we've got like, like a high incidence of sexual of things such as child marriages being like allowed to exist because these individuals they identify with a certain culture. We think you actively creep with those kind of standards that exist in society when you can low increase like the age of consent, but most importantly, when you can say no, because most of these institutions are founded on using these women as a means for pleasure, as using these children as a means to have children and like increase the family name. We think you're effectively able to combat those kind of institutions that exist and are founded solely on like using these children as a means to an end. Right? But the next they say, um, we think like um what she also says like we like these children are not in a position to make informed decisions. That's where the extension comes from, like CG. Why do we think they're not able to make this informed decision? We think like the access to comprehensive sex education inherently increases with age. If you go to high school, the best you can get from say what is over the radio and you don't get like actual on-ground experience for these children. But two we think they are stuck in homes where there's like consistent indoctrination and fostering purity cultures where you're supposed to be this perfect child we cannot go around engaging in sex we think the discourse that exists around sex and how the government has dealt with that is consistently failed but we think as individuals grow up we decentralize the sphere of influence that exists and we allow them to be more liberal we value that like increase in the amount of sex education that comes with age that's why we're like more impactful in showing what these individuals are not informed and the choice that exists there is not true but second in terms of like extension we talk about like the public health as a sector. Zimbabwe accounts for like 23 percent of women between 18 to 49, where we will give birth below the age of 18. We think STIs are more rampant among like young individuals. The reason why like increasing the age of consent effectively allows us to deal with like this. We think first of all, the health sector is already failing in engaging a number of the statistics that exist. When you can effectively increase the age of consent, you like reduce on you regulate the, like the, the, the sexual activity that exists at this age. But most important, you protect these individuals from all the drastic impacts of the fading health center of
That was the member of government making his case. We will move swiftly on to the member of opposition from closing opposition. The floor is yours. Starting with OG. We do agree that legislation exists, but we don't think legislation should exist and be rigid and not yield to things like context that exist within the current status quo. Panel, in Zimbabwe, the age of first for, of the age of first sexual debut, according to statistics, is 14 years for men and 15 years for women. We think that a law that says, oh my God, sexual consent should be at 18, doesn't stop people from having sex. They do anyway. We don't like it, but we think they do have it. And because people do have it in society, it is important that when laws are crafted and drafted, they should address the problem that exists. And we don't think you address the problem that exists by putting a bar, but we think you address the problem that exists by allowing things to exist within the free space and then creating policies like comprehensive sexual education at a young age and then people can better deal with sexual problems in the past right we think when the decision was made after bt went to court right the decision was made that all oh, the legal age should to be raised to 18 right we think conservative twitter spaces that want to institutionalize sex like what Kosi tell you right they celebrated and said oh my god all teen moms or all people who engage in sex are deviants within society we don't celebrate that right we think we don't celebrate conservative structures that want to define what is morally good and what is morally bad as you get from opening opposition we reject the premise that men who sit in court or men who sit in parliament should decide what is good for society right we regret the institutionalization of sex we think sex is more of an individual choice this is where the law should be applicable right we don't think if you try to create a bar for individuals just because there's a law sex is going to stop happening but what is going to happen on your side of the house is first of all government will not have comprehensive policies to deal with the STIs, the teenage pregnancies, and the abortions that Kosi talks about, right? We think, first of all, if the age of consent is at 16, it is at 18, sorry, it means no one below the age of 18 can access SRIH services from any form of institution, especially one that is backed by government, right? It means that if you have a sexual encounter, you can't go to the hospital and ask for medication. You can't ask for PrEP, you can't ask for PEP, but you're going to engage anyway. So there is no interaction between individuals of a young age with sex, right? And when it comes to comprehensive sexual education, we don't think you get comprehensive education by how many years you live, like, we think by how many years you live, but we think you get comprehensive education by how many systems as an individual you're able to interact with on that specific topic. Let me bring it down, right? We think, first of all, if a young child, like if age of consent is lowered, right, what happens is that the whole community understands that sex happens at these ages, which means that you reduce the, the like, that generational gap that exists within parents. It means at 13, your mother is able to have the talk with you and tell you about how consent is important. So it begins at home and the cultivation of that education that Kosi values begins at home, right? Not only does it begin at home, it also trickles down to communities, right? Where even the church or even religion, like other religious structures, right? And other conservative structures can be engaged and understand that whether we like it or not, our children have sex. So because they have sex, let's try to deal with it. Let us create like conversations, let us create policies that enable them to make safe decisions, right? We also think that on our side of the house, you maximize the interaction that state has with actual communities because you follow the context, drop legislation and policy that, that like follows that, right? We agree that maybe morally and culturally previously, we didn't like the idea of people having sex below the age of 18, but it happens. So because it's happening, we should deal with it. And we don't think you curtail it by just putting a bar. Right now, children host vuzu parties, children host sex parties and just because we don't have a law that protects them when they get pregnant when they get an STI they can't go anywhere and all those Vuzu parties when the police get there all they do is just arrest everyone without making proper investigations as to oh what was going on we assume there was no sex because we say it wasn't there but we know it has always been there so we think that it is important for us to deal with that we offer protection we offer discourse and we offer nuanced progression in societal liberalization thank you that was the member of opposition at this point where some of us need to understand and go back to the dictionary of what nuanced means. We will be taking a short break. Stay tuned and we'll be back with more.
welcome back to the sixth edition of the Sassy Debate Challenge. We are in the last quarter of the semi-finals debate. We have heard from opening government, opening opposition, and member of government and member of opposition. Last quarter, I'm asking government whip to please make their way to the podium and make their case. We believe that um, at the point when this debate then changed for us was when we missed the main area of contention in this debate. We were not here necessarily to evaluate the ages and well I think 16 is probably younger than 18. We were here to evaluate the various impact that sex has on these particular ages, right? So we come to, we, we have a leader of opposition who comes and brings the idea of liberalism, right? Under lib lib liberalism, I'll tell you about Nicole who is a 16 year old here in Harare and meets a 28 year old Nkosi and Nicole and 28 year old Nkosi spark their relationship, right? Nicole is living this life that Nkosi loves me and I'm having sex with Nkosi and I'm living this fallacy that I am doing what I want with my body because again from side opposition the presence of secondary sex characteristics is my sign that sex must now happen right so I get into this condition with Nkosi where over time Nkosi then starts to make outrageous sex demands right over time Nkosi then starts to remove the point where even I as his partner can ask for safe sex right what what I tell you here, ladies and gentlemen, is fictional at this point, but it's the life that bulk of our children are living, right? Well, I also come to you and I say that you don't say to someone, go and have sex to learn. Like, go and do something that has dire consequences. That's how you will learn, and that's how life is, ladies and gentlemen. We don't raise our children like that. And we understand life has many gray areas, but gray areas are not cracks through which we let our children fall through, right? They also come here and they say sex is so important. Ladies and gentlemen, Show me right now a child that is near death because they did not have sex or a child that is less protected by the law today because they have not been exposed to harmful sex practices before we feel, first of all, that they have gained some maturity but also, second of all, that they are now in a position where we have informed them enough to be able to make a better decision, right? They also come in, they say that, well, um, there's also a case that comes again that speaks about issues around sex debuts. Ladies and gentlemen, sex debuts are a thing in I think in developing countries. You know why early sex debuts rather are things in developing countries and low income communities. You know why? Because those are the areas in our societies that have the highest levels of sexual exploitation of young children. Those are the areas in our society, ladies and gentlemen, where children are overly sexualized and they never get the chance to be children. What we are saying here, ladies and gentlemen, is we are protecting the children. If this child can buy beer, why the hell is this child, if this child cannot buy beer, or if this child cannot decide, decide in something as big as the presidential election, if this child cannot enter, enter any formal employment, why are we letting this child be, be exposed to things such as dire sex characters, dire, the dire consequences of sex, right? We also come to you, ladies and gentlemen, and we hear a lot of conversations about discourse, discourse. Ladies and gentlemen, if we say don't do something, we don't mean that we are also going to stop actively addressing that issue, right? We believe that essentially 16-year-olds have not had enough access to comprehensive sex education for us to say that there is a 16 year old they're going to go and know what to do right so what do we bring Lord, in our side of the house we bring what we call humanity right we come and we give you this the, the distinction around circles of influence and the various contexts in which our children exist that we must then be able to, to to use ladies and gentlemen to support our children and help them have access to safe spaces right we also come and talk about the vulnerability of our children me and Gosi again ladies Ladies and gentlemen, in a position where men can exploit children in child marriages, in rape and sexual abuse, and in these unfair partnerships, we believe that then we should give these children at least a fighting chance. We also come to you and we give you statistics of how the health system in itself is not able to cater, so we are going to limit the burden. Thank you. That was the government whip making her case. We will now hear from the last speaker to close this entire debate. Closing whip. The government case is largely built on the fantasy that tries to escape some societal real realities and focus on legal necessities that do not solve the prevailing problems. 
we are saying that 16 year olds are engaging in sexual activity so we need to impress that we do not need to raise the age so that also 16 year olds can negotiate all on all or they can negotiate systems that assist them now i shall go on to address a few a few points that have been raised by by the government now they talk about that uh, they, they have a claim that talks about that the age of consent seeks to harmonize with other laws that allow them to be held accountable like putting the law to like raising the age of consent to 18 now the law must draw on solving problems what we are saying is that 16 year olds are engaging in sexual activity now it will hamper on the efforts that can be taken to empower 16 year olds to consent on sexual activity and receive SRH resources now what i am saying here is we need to understand that these the, those who are under those who are under 18 can also need assistance now the dpm goes on to say we believe that raising the age of sexual consent is protecting the individuals from themselves now i will address the issue of reproductive autonomy and misguided paternalism in a few minutes now we need to under now i shall go on to highlight and to harmonize our points as opposition we need to consider it imperative that we have to assess the issues of reproductive autonomy that is 16 year olds have a right to choose and the issues of sexual maturity and the, and the issue of marriage and sexual disparity <clears throat> It is necessary to allow 16-year-olds to consent to sexual activity as much as 18-year-olds. Why? Because there is no evidence to suggest that consent is correlated to sexual activity. It is necessary now to have a lower, to lower the age of sexual consent now so that adolescents who commit to sexual activity have assistance and in such a case those legalities associated with consent are null and void. Now, research amongst the youth has reasons to abstain or to delay sexual activity do not center around the legalities. Rather, it is imperative then to have adolescents of, of younger age to consent to sexual to consent and also to have access to provision of S. RHR resources and also to allow an increase in access to facilities like condoms. Now this would not be now this would be difficult to give to, to younger individuals. Why? Because it would be seem like we are implicitly conniving with illegalities. Now we also talk about uh, the inexperience on or biological limitations of 18 year olds and 16 year olds. We need to understand that the emotional intelligence or the intelligence of 16 year olds and 18 year olds is relatively insignificant. Comprehensive and clinical information should be made available to younger individuals so that this can help them prepare for that first and subsequent phase of discovering their sexuality. Now, it is a fallacy to believe that those who are younger than 18 are not ready to engage. Now, the important aspect that we need to look at is to ensure that they are made aware to learn about their sexuality through SRH education facilities. Now, with the rise in the age of sexual consent, it now makes it difficult to offer resources for SRHR to young adolescents without seeming to connive in these illegalities. Now, providing condoms and contraceptives can now be as an implicit acknowledgement that infringes on the law of consent. Now, this means that organizations and institutions like SEWAT can no longer offer services to secondary schools without some legal retaliation. So therefore, we believe that lowering the age of social connection now has more harm. And with the words of the closing whip, that concludes the semi-finals debate. You know, at this point, we are really learning new things, new words, and you know, in in the in the in the vein of learning, I just need to ask, what is a Vuzu party? Yes, podium four. What is a Vuzu party? It's a party. <laughs> what do you mean it's a party? What type of party is it? Well, I've never been to one because usually it's like, yeah, it's, it's like um, it's done usually like after people. Those are house parties that uh, that adolescents have, without the knowledge of an adult. Oh, okay, so it's just it's just a party. Okay, so what happens is when children come back, especially in Bulawayo from uh, boarding schools, they organize these parties where they go essentially to someone's house and they have like 
extreme drinking, and then they also have orgies at these parties. So some of them are exclusively sex parties. So they actively engage in like swinging, which is exchanging sexual partners. Ah yes, still in the learning curve. How do you get invited? <laughs> We're all learning. It's for high scholars mostly. Like high after scholars. like after like they it's either after they write exams, after they come back from boarding school. That's that's yeah. So you have to be in high school. <laughs> all right, all right. I must say though, all our participants are looking quite dapper today. Just a round of applause for you guys. You're looking absolutely amazing. I am being told that the results are in. The results are. We will be learning that in the next episode. All cases having been made and the results not having been given, we will be back next time. This is the Sussy Debate Challenge brought to you by Say What with support from the Swedish Embassy in Zimbabwe. I am your debate mistress, .co Nicole. Until next time. Hey. Hey.